Hello and welcome to Newsmax TV. I'm David Patton and we are pleased to welcome the Reverend Franklin Graham, son of revered global evangelist Billy Graham and president and chairman of the Samaritan's Purse Ministry that's helped millions around the world. Reverend Graham, thank you so much for joining us on Newsmax TV. Thank you, great to be with you. Reverend Graham, Christians in Sudan are being systematically bombed by North Sudan military aircraft three weeks ago. A Bible college supported by Samaritan's Purse operating in Islamic North Sudan was destroyed in one such attack. Other than filing official protests, what has the administration done to halt the violence and has it done enough? Well, no, I don't think the administration has done enough. Uh, if you take Newsweek magazine last week, uh, the cover story was about Christians being uh, murdered, uh, slaughtered uh, in every Muslim country around the world, almost every Muslim country. Uh, and Christians, who are the minorities, have lost the protection of the governments. Uh, and this is, this, is a, this is shameful, and whether we see Sudan or whether we see what's happening to Christians in uh, Turkey, Iraq, uh, all across the Middle East and even into Asia, Indonesia and Oceania. Uh, Christians are, are attacked, mutilated, murdered, uh, and the government is doing nothing. The governments, the Islamic governments are doing nothing uh, to protect them. And so in the Sudan, our, our Bible school was bombed. We had a hospital that was bombed on seven separate occasions. Uh, the, the Christians in the northern part of Sudan right now are, are, are being annihilated and the world is, and this administration is being quiet about it. It would appear that the Arab Spring may be turning into a long winter of discontent for that region's Christians. How serious is it region wide? Oh, it's very serious. Uh, if you take what's happening in Egypt, um, uh, Mubarak, who was the dictator, but he kept the peace with Israel. Uh, what's going to happen now, I'm afraid, is you're going to have a, a, an Islamic regime uh, that will come to life in in Egypt and the Christians have already been under attack and I believe it's going to only continue and you have around 13 million Christians that live in Egypt and they're, they're, they have nowhere to go unless they come to the United States and I don't know if this government is prepared to take in 13 million refugees out of Egypt but that's what's going to happen the Muslims want to either annihilate the Christians or force them to leave. Now many Christians as you know feel that there exists a global dollar, double standard one that staunchly protects the sensibilities of Muslims while giving sort of a shrug of the shoulders when Christians are beaten, jailed, or worse. Is that an accurate perception? Well, I, I believe we should protect all minorities in this country, and of course the Muslims are a minority, and I believe we should do all, all that we can to protect them and assure their freedom uh, like we do anywhere else. But, but that is not happening in Islamic countries. Christians are not protected. Uh, they, because of Islam. And there's, there's millions of fine Muslim people and we care very much for the Muslims and I want the Muslims to know that God loves them and that God uh, cares for them and that Jesus Christ died for their sins. I want them to know that. But what's happening, there's, you've got millions of, of wonderful Muslim people who don't want to be involved in this uh, type of thing. But yet they, these radicals that are gaining strength are beginning to uh, come after Christians in their countries, the minorities. Uh, killing them, burning their churches, uh, mutilating, raping the women, and this is what we're seeing. And it's uh, this. There's nothing being done. Nothing's being said. And I, I don't understand why the United States government, why the president doesn't uh, warn these countries where this happens, like Egypt. If this continues to happen, you'll get no more foreign aid from the United States. Uh, to tell Iraq, if you continue to allow the minorities to be attacked and destroyed. If you're not going to protect the minorities, we're not going to give you any more foreign aid. How come we don't go from country to country around the world and, and tell them, Pakistan, if you don't protect the minorities, we are not going to give you any more foreign aid, but we're not doing that. Well, let's turn briefly to domestic politics. GOP presidential contender and former Senator Rick Santorum ran into a bit of trouble this weekend, first accusing President Obama of a, quote, phony theology, unquote. He later walked that back saying Obama is a Christian but has a different world view. What is your reaction? Is Santorum right that Obama as a professed Christian has a world view that is somehow outside the Christian mainstream? Well, I, I don't want to get into that. First of all, you know, I, I don't know what Santorum really believes. I don't know what the President uh, Barack Obama really believes. Uh, you know, those, those are, I mean, God knows every man's heart. And so, 
uh, regardless of what they say, God looks right into the heart and he sees uh, the heart of man. Uh, the Word of God is, is the standard that I use, God's Word, uh, to, to measure uh, what a person says or doesn't say, or how they live their life. The, the, the Word of God is, is the standard. And so uh, I believe that Rick uh, uh, Santorum and uh, Pre President Barack Obama, I think these are both good men, but I've never really sat down and, and fully understand exactly the depth of their faith or lack of faith, I, I don't know. Uh, but God knows. Uh, the President says he's a Christian. Uh, Santorum says he's a Christian. So I just guess we have to accept that. So it would be better in our political dialogue to leave the questioning of faith behind and move forward as best we can with the information we have available? Well, I mean, a faith helps to define who a person is, uh, no question. Uh, the values uh, that, that they, they hold dear. Uh, the faith is, 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 is very important for a voter to understand. But I think the, what the most important thing is how are we going to get the country out of the mess that we're in? Uh, the policies of uh, President Barack Obama uh, have not really helped this country. We, we are, we are in, in a huge mess financially, economically, uh, and we're cutting our military back when we should, if anything, we should be increasing our military strength. The world is not a safer place in which we live. It's far more dangerous. And uh, uh, our uh, other countries, China, the Soviet Union, uh, they, are, they are rearming, they're, they're building. And uh, we should not be uh, uh, cutting at this time, in my opinion. Now, Reverend Graham, we recently saw the president roll out a controversial health mandate, first on faith-based organizations, and then secondarily, it came on to insurance companies. Does his shift in policy satisfy you that as Obamacare proceeds that the government won't be infringing on freedom of worship and religion? Well, uh, it, uh, no, I am very concerned because uh, what they tried to do to the Catholic Church in mandating uh, this contraception, I, I don't believe that the compromise is a true compromise. Uh, you, you're still paying for it, but it's going to be paid now through the insurance car carrier who's going to now uh, charge you. But what I'm, what I'm concerned about as a faith-based organization that I'm going to be forced to hire people that are not of my faith or, or don't have the same values that I have and that I am going to be forced to hire them and that I will not be able to discriminate. And that's, that's my concern. And I think that's where we're heading. And uh, frankly, this, I think every Christian out there uh, should be concerned that uh, we will be forced uh, to, to bring people into our organizations and put them on our payrolls when we know that they are opposed to everything we stand for and believe. How real and present is that danger? And if it comes to that, would Samaritan's Purse, for example, uh, forego all other types of funding so that it could maintain its independence? Or would that even be an option? Well, but I, I, the way it is with the government, we, we take very little government money, and I'm happy to give all of it back. I don't need any of it. But I'm, even though we're privately funded, uh, I believe that the government is going to mandate. Uh, they're heading that direction where we will not be able to discriminate in our hiring practices. And uh, we're not a church. We're a parachurch organization. And so I'm afraid that parachurch groups like myself, Samaritan's Purse, the Billy Graham Evangelistic Association, are going to be forced uh, to hire people uh, not of our faith. And this would be, this would be terrible. And of course, um, uh, I guess at that point, I would just have to break the law and uh, take it all the way to the Supreme Court and fight it if I had to. Reverend Franklin Graham, thank you so much for joining us on Newsmax TV. Thank you. And thank you for watching Newsmax TV.